Night. Ask for the Republicans. <laughs> Two uh, top Republicans in the Florida state legislature are endorsing Ron DeSantis for president even before he officially announces his bid for the White House. During an event yesterday, the state's House Speaker and Senate President applauded the governor's legislative priorities, think about that, saying he's the leader the country needs. These public endorsements are expected to serve as the starting point for a wave of support from rank-and-file Republicans in Florida. Former President Trump, however, has already secured the endorsement of 10 Florida members of Congress. Joining us now, national political correspondent for Time, Molly Ball, who has a new piece published just moments ago on, quote, the DeSantis Project. And Molly, you, you write in part uh, this, from school board meetings to the Walt Disney Corp. The shelves of elementary school libraries to local mask ordinances, everything bears DeSantis's stamp. For a typical Republican governor, any of these policies might represent a signature achievement. For DeSantis, they're the latest line items in an agenda he calls the Florida Blueprint. By operationalizing the culture war into a set of concrete policies, DeSantis has transformed the nation's third most populous state. What was once America's paragmatic swing state now pulsates bright red. For the first time in modern history, registered Republicans outnumber Democrats. The people of Florida seem to like the steady hand, even if it's an iron fist. And I'm just, Molly, I'd love to hear more about that because what plays into this are not just the culture war issues and the school bans, but a six week abortion ban. I mean, even in Florida, is that what the, the, the constituents are saying they want? Well, we'll see. I think, uh, you know, it, the the question is going to be, as DeSantis prepares to run for president, does that play first and foremost with a national Republican audience? He's someone who really believes you really run one election at a time. If you look at how he has won his elections in the past, you have to win that primary mm -hmm. to get to that general election. So you already see him preparing to run to Trump's right uh, on the issue of abortion. And then, obviously, it is a question that many have raised. Is that a stance that will play in a general election with the American public, uh, much less with Floridians? You know, prior to uh, this ban being passed, uh, Florida was the most pro-choice red state in the country in terms of the just the popular sentiment. Uh, so there is a feeling that he may have gone too far. And you do hear from even some Republicans in Florida who otherwise support him uh, that they wonder if this is going too far. But I think the large context is the way he has pushed this conservative agenda in Florida. And so as part of this in-depth profile of DeSantis, I wanted to give people an understanding of how he has, as you, as you said, transformed Florida and really made it, a lot of people say, a different place. It even feels different just being there. And, uh, you know, no matter where he goes in his presidential campaign, he's already had, I think, a measurable effect on the national political debate. He's changed the face of America uh, with the way he has pushed this agenda, this sweeping agenda in Florida, and with the effectiveness that he's had there. So, Molly, for all the criticism Governor DeSantis has received nationally, including here, uh, he is still around 60 percent approval in the state of Florida. That's up over the last couple of months, not down. He won by 19 points in that race against Charlie Crist. He won by a million and a half votes. Still very popular in Florida is the point. And in the last week, we started to get a little bit of a look at what his theory of the case against Donald Trump is, which is that I win. I won in Florida, a big, wide state. If you want to keep losing, go with Donald Trump, is what he's implying. If you want to win, go with me. But what else is he going to bring to this race in terms of criticism and attacks on Donald Trump, a man who Donald Trump says to whom he owes his political career because of his endorsement way back when? That's right. That is really the million dollar question for really anyone who wants to get in this race against Trump. But I think for DeSantis particularly, uh, you know, Florida has had Republican governors for, for 25 years, and yet it took DeSantis to really push the state to the right in this way. So you see him preparing to make an argument uh, that he is both more effective uh, than Trump, more focused on policy, more focused on particularly this sort of populist, new right, sort of culture war agenda, uh, 
not the traditional uh, sort of, you know, small government republicanism of the past. And then also, as you mentioned, that he's more electable, that he took this what was once considered the, the typical swing state in America. And, and now it is a bright red state. It's a state where he is popular, where, you know, the Democrats keep predicting this backlash that has yet to materialize, at least when it comes to voter turnout and, and voter reaction. Uh, and so this is the theory that he's going to present to Republican voters. The question is, will his criticism of Trump remain sort of this implicit, I win and he doesn't, or will he really go on the attack and take it to Trump because he, uh, because no one has made that work yet. Uh, that is the, the catch-22 that all Republicans have been in since 2015, uh, is that there doesn't seem to be a way to separate Donald Trump from the Republican base. So that's going to be the question for his campaign as he prepares to announce. All right, the new piece online right now for Time, national political correspondent for Time, Molly Ball. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's great to have you on.